Alright, hello and welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna go over gas phase reactions. And to be particular, we're gonna be dealing with gas phase reactions in isothermal systems, okay? We're gonna restrict our discussion to isothermal systems. And uh, so let's begin, shall we? Here I have a decomposition reaction. Both my reactants and my product are in the gas phase. So if one mole of A is consumed, if one mole of A is consumed, then that means that two moles of B are gonna be generated. So the net change, so the this is gonna correspond to a total increase of plus one in total moles, right? In total moles. So as the reaction proceeds, you guys can see that as the reaction proceeds, as more A is consumed, as more A is consumed, the total, the number of moles, the total number of moles, N, T, N, sub T, total number of moles changes, changes. I hope you can see that, changes. And we're dealing with gas phase reactions. And in gas phase reactions, volume effects, volume and density effects become appreciable. So this change in moles, this change in total moles due to reaction is actually going to cause a change in, this is going to cause a change in the volume of our system if we allow it to expand. All right, if the volume is free to expand, if there is, if we don't have a rigid container, then there are going to be volumetric changes. All right. And this becomes important. This becomes important in flow reactors. All right. And this phenomenon becomes important, very important in flow reactors. Why? Important in flow reactors. So when we design, so when we design CSTRs and PFRs and PBRs, for gas phase reactions, the changes in volumetric flow rate become important. So we have to account for, all right, uh, we have to account for changes in volumetric flow rate. Account for changes, deltas in volumetric flow rate. Okay, let's talk about volumetric flow rate, shall we, for a, mi for a, for a minute? And uh, before, we before we start our discussion, let's write a generic chemical reaction. I'm writing a generic irreversible chemical reaction. A and B are my reactants, okay? As you guys can see, reactants right here, and B, C and D are my products right here. All right, we know some general chemistry, so that's good. And these are gonna be my stoichiometric ratios. And for the first five chapters, for the first five chapters of H. Scott Fogler, Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering, you are gonna be doing everything on the basis of conversion of A. Conversion of A, that's the theme of the first five chapters, conversion of A. That's the theme for the first five chapters, chapter one to five for H. Scott Fogler. So it would make sense, it would make sense if we, uh, for our, uh, chemical equation right here we were to divide everything by the molar ratio of a so now we have everything on the basis of one mole of a all right now we have the stoichiometric ratio for a is one so now everything is per mole basis of a all right very good now let's see uh let's bring back our discussion to let's bring back our discussion to volumetric flow rate for a second um, okay, so for a flow reactor, the inlet volumetric flow rate is going to be equal to the inlet mo total molar flow rate, the inlet total molar flow rate, flow rate times the ideal gas constant times the inlet temperature divided by the inlet pressure. I'm also assuming ideal gas. I am assuming ideal gas. Those three beautiful worlds, those three beautiful words, assume ideal gas better than I love you. I hope you guys are familiar with that. And at the exit, this is my inlet, all right? This right here is my inlet. And I'm gonna have a different story at the exit. My exit, 
for a gas phase reaction might not be the same. My exit flow rate might not be the same. My exit flow rate is going to be the exit molar flow rate times the ideal gas constant, my exit temperature divided by my exit pressure. All right. I have, let's say, I have equation one on the top. Equation one. All right. And equation two. Let's divide both of these equations. Let's do some algebra. Divide equation two by equation one. We're doing some simple algebra, ladies and gentlemen. And you'll see that the result we get is going to look something like this V over V naught, exit over inlet. Uh, volumetric flow rate is equal to exit over inlet molar flow rate and I hope you guys see that the ideal gas constant is gonna drop out I'm gna have exit temperature over exit T naught and inlet pressure over exit pressure all right uh, let me just check for a second oh yeah that looks good and now all right so now if you assume if you assume that your system that your reactor is isothermal if your reactor is isothermal what happens to this term pause for a second and think I'm assuming you guys have thought about it if my system is isothermal there is no change in temperature which means that inlet and outlet temperature are the same this is what I get this is my this is the result that I get hold up sorry V over V naught is equal to F sub FT or FT naught. Remember, one uh, this FT is my exit molar flow rate and FT naught is my inlet total molar flow rate total everything combined. P naught over P. And now, all right. So this became now the temperature ratio will became equivalent to one because there was no change in temperature. And next step, if we assume isobaric. If we assume isobaric, no pressure drop, then our equation becomes even more simple. V over V naught is equal to the ratios of the outlet total molar flow rate and the inlet total molar flow rate. And this can be rearranged as V equals V naught multiplied by exit over inlet total molar flow rate. So now if we knew if we now we need an analytical expression for this we need an expression that captures this fraction okay and we're going to talk about that in the next video all right so stay tuned ladies and gentlemen just to give you a quick recap we talked about how gas phase reactions are going to be how gas phase reactions cause problems change in total moles change in total number of moles is going to translate into change in total volume of the system and this is important this becomes important in flow reactors batch reactors are usually rigid vessels so that's not a problem flow reactors it becomes an issue so we need to account for the change in volumetric flow rate the first five chapters our discussion is going to be based on the conversion of a i hope you guys are following the textbook and yeah so inlet and exit using the ideal gas law nothing fancy here nothing fancy all right, and just performing some simple algebra, some simple algebra, we were able to, this is our result so far. And in the next video, we're gonna, we're gonna reverse engineer exit over inlet total flow rate. So thank you guys for watching.